Hey guys, and welcome to another Music Habits video. This is where I read excerpts from my best-selling book, The Mental Game of Electronic Music Production. And in this episode, I'm gonna get into 10 things that I wish I had known uh, when I started making uh, electronic music. And um, this will completely shift the mental side. And this really helped me shift my whole outlook on how I approach making music. And uh, I hope that it helps you guys as well. So I'm just gonna start real quick with a review from my book. Uh, this is by Roy G. Biv, and uh, he writes, great book written by someone who clearly, clearly knows what he's talking about. This is extremely helpful in setting your perspectives and also giving you some technical tips. Although the reason to buy this book is not for techniques, it is for helping you get the right frame of mind. This is a must read for anyone producing electronic music in any genre. Thanks, Roy. Really appreciate that. Um, and let's go ahead and get into this. So I'm going to kind of go off the 10 things that I discovered that really helped me improve uh, my music production and kind of get my head in the right place. So number one, your first attempts at making music won't be great. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay. Uh, you can't expect your first songs to be some big, massive song that competes with other producers who've produced hundreds of songs already, right? How do you expect to compete with someone who's on their 100th song or 50th song when you're starting your first 10 songs? So what you need to accept is that it's gonna take you 10 to 20 songs to really find your groove. And that doesn't mean that these first songs that you make aren't gonna be great. It's just not gonna be your best work. You're going to improve as you go. So it's really important for you to really keep in mind that when you've taken yourself to the furthest point that you can with your current skills, that it's okay to call a song done, okay? You don't even have to share it with anyone. It's just a matter of getting your song from start to finish with the level of skill that you currently have and accepting that, all right? So that is a really important uh, first lesson that took me a while to learn. Number two, nobody creates in a constant peak state. So what I mean by this is a lot of people think that you know, the experts just show up, they know exactly what they're doing, and they're on this certain flow level where everything just comes out all the time. This is something that happens for uh, music producers and any sort of artist, really, but th this is few and far between. For the most part, you're not going to be creating at this peak level, and usually the peak level only comes after you've decided to sit down and do the work, okay? So if you're not sitting down and doing the work regardless of how you feel, the chances of you getting into a peak state or what people call flow is very minute. But for people that show up day after day after day, the, uh, the muse, if you will, will kind of arrive to assist you. You know, uh, the peak state kind of shows up for people who are already committed to doing the work regardless. So something really important to keep in mind. Number three, most of what you think you need to know doesn't matter. Okay. So, so many artists have this belief that they can't start making music with what they know right now. Because of this fear of creating, they over-prepare and they end up wasting hundreds of hours watching every tutorial, outlining tips of every style of music and diving deep into music theory. But what they don't realize is that most of this information will fall right back out of your head and never make it into your toolbox, okay? Uh, on top of that, they're getting so many opposing pieces of advice that all this information causes more confusion than it does benefits. So as a rule, a new producer should spend 80% of their time making music, all right, kind of pushing yourself as far as you can on your own, and only 20% of your time at most spent learning new techniques. And usually those are techniques that you realize that you need to know. So basically when you push yourself to a limit, then you know exactly where your challenge is and you know where to put that 20%. It's a, a good idea to uh, set a timer for yourself. Give yourself 15 minutes to figure out a solution. When that alarm goes off, Regardless of where you're at, you stop the learning phase and you get back into the music making uh, phase and you push yourself as far as you can. I think that's a, a good uh, habit to start instilling in yourself. Number four, most of the tools you think you need, you don't. Look, uh, I personally use uh, Ableton Live and much of what I use are internal uh, plugins and effects. Sure, I have certain um, third party effects that I've uh, discovered that has a certain personality or taste or flavor that I tend to prefer. But is it necessary to make great tunes? No, it's not. You can use the basic tools. What's more important is that you understand the tools that you're using, not which kind of 
you know, which kind of uh, compression to use or which kind of reverb. Um, these kind of tools across the board are, are plenty good enough to use just what it comes stock with your software, all right? So if you think that you've got to do all this research and go to forums and figure out what's the best this or that, what you're gonna get is a bunch of people arguing and uh, giving you mixed information. The best thing for you to do is learn how to use the tools that come in your DAW and add to those slowly, all right? They're plenty good to make great sounding tunes. I've had many songs hit number one or the top 10 that use mostly just standard plugins, okay? It's just understanding how to use those plugins. So don't go on this hunt thinking that you need this collection of all this expensive equipment, okay? Number five, your habits count more than your knowledge, okay? So here's the thing. If you're getting up and doing the work every day, right? That's gonna get you so much further than the knowledge that you think you need, okay? Experience is the knowledge. So if you're not doing the work, you're not gaining the experience. You're only reading about the experience. And by reading about the experience or watching videos about the experience, all you're getting are arrows pointing in the direction of what will happen to you if you give yourself that experience, okay? So get your habits dialed in, get yourself into the habit of working on music 30 minutes a day, if you can, one hour a day, and see what happens. Try it for 30 days, and you know, you'll be able to make a noticeable change in your ability to create, okay? Number six, everything that you want in your music, in your art, <clears throat> comes through people, all right? If you're not willing to communicate with people, through people, the chances of your art being heard or seen are very low. Everything that you want comes through people. Every dollar that you get in your bank account comes through another person, okay? You gotta remember that. Even if you're working a job for someone else, how does that company make their money? Through other people, right? Your creativity is the building block, but your, your communication with people is what really sets you apart and actually takes your art to the level of reaching the audience that you want, okay? Number seven, you don't have to be miserable to make good music. This is something that a lot of people think needs to happen, that you need to be really depressed or you need, <laughs> you need an alcohol or drug problem to really write good music. And it's not true at all, actually. Some of these experiences while you're going through it um, can really cripple your creativity. Now, maybe reflecting on uh, miserable times that you've had in your life can make for decent art that people can connect with. Everyone's gone through rough times. But thinking that you need to be in that zone now in order to make that music that pulls at people's emotions is just not true, okay? The truth is, the better your headspace is, the better the results are gonna be uh, with the art that you create, okay? Number eight, musicianship is optional, okay? What I mean by that is there's a lot of workarounds. Uh, you don't need to be amazing at playing an instrument. You don't need to know uh, the insides and outs of music theory. Uh, you don't need to be an amazing sound designer uh, to make great music, okay? This is something that is truly optional. There's so many tools that can help you work around any musicianship limitations. There are many, many very popular artists and successful artists who do not know music theory, who are not great musicians, who make great music. So what you really want to think about it's really the way your brain works. And, and a good idea is a good idea, regardless of your ability on any particular instrument, okay? What you're sharing with other people is inside your head. And any way that you can find to get your ideas out of your head, that's what you should focus on. I'm not saying you shouldn't learn music theory. I'm not saying you shouldn't learn sound design. I'm not saying you shouldn't get better at your craft, but you shouldn't let any of that hold you back from starting to make music. Let yourself start, let yourself fail. Let yourself go through the process. Once again, this is where you gain your experience, not through textbooks. You need to know why you need to understand certain aspects of music. And the only way you're gonna understand your challenges and what you need to know is by just getting to it, you know? There's so many great bands out there that didn't know how to play their instruments and they just got started and they just practiced and they got better and they worked around their limitations, you know? Most people, I, I still don't know how to read music. I don't know how to write music. Like, 
as far as writing a score or something like that. Uh, I'm just recently getting into um, understanding music theory, but this is after 30 years of me making music and having success with it. So just understand that that is not a necessity, okay? Just get started with whatever you know and go from there. Number nine, time is the only difference between you and those who are now successful. All right, does that make sense to you? Those who you're looking up to right now that you aspire to be like, the only difference between you and them is they put in the time that you haven't yet put in, okay? And if you've been doing this for a while and you still feel like you're behind, well, others have been, been putting their time into the right aspects of creativity, okay? Maybe your focus hasn't been on the right thing. So that's why it's taking you more time. So you need to develop your mental habits and that's gonna lead you to making the discoveries you need to make over time to get to the place that your, your favorite artists are right now, the artists that you aspire to be like, okay? Those artists are not different from you. You know, these are people that are just pointing the way to your own potential, okay? So just remember, put in the time and you will move forward. If you don't put in the time, then you can't expect the next thing you do to be that thing that's going to break the doors open for you. It's possible, it could happen, but for the most part, putting in consistent effort is what's gonna get you there, okay? And the last, number 10, is everybody steals, okay? You need to stop being paranoid about using loops or using samples, that sort of thing. Now, obviously there's copyright issues and things like that, and you don't want to steal people's copyrights, but to borrow ideas from here and there, that's completely normal. And everyone's been doing it since the beginning of creating music, of pulling ideas from other people. And the thing is, we are basically just filters. So no matter what comes into us, it's gonna filter through our own tastes and personality. So whatever comes out of us, from those inspirations is always gonna sound a little bit different. And sometimes it'll take you a number of songs before you realize what that thing is that makes you unique, but it will happen. You know, it might take 10 songs, but once you've kind of get these songs, originally you might think that you were just borrowing all these ideas from other artists, and that might be partially true. But what makes you, you is the things that triggered your creativity. The things that triggered you are different. Other people could listen to all those same songs and be triggered by different aspects of those songs. You see what I'm saying? So this is where you'll start figuring out your own personality within all your influences. Okay, so those are the 10 things that I wish I knew um, that have really empowered me to make more music, better music, and really enjoy the process much more. So with that, guys, I hope you got a lot out of this. If you're interested in my book, you can pick it up on Amazon, The Mental Game of Electronic Music Production. Uh, check it out. And uh, if you would like direct help from me as a personal coach, or you want uh, to have a consultation with me to see what might be the best fit for you to get you to the next level, all you got to do is go to musicsoftwaretraining.com forward slash application. Okay, you fill out that application and we will schedule a free consultation and I'll, I'll sit there and I'll answer every question that I can over about a 20 minute period. Okay, um, with that guys, have a fantastic one and I'll speak to you guys real soon. Take care.